So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Hi, beautiful friends, and welcome back to Whippoorwill Holler. And welcome back to Miss Lori's Kitchen. I'm so glad y'all are here with me. Today we're going to be making some blueberry preserves. And for a little extra, we're going to be making some peach preserves. And I decided I've got to get this done because I have both of them in bags in the freezer and I need the freezer space. So, I'm going to show you step by step how to make some really good preserves. You can use blackberries, whatever berries you have. So, let's get started so we can taste some of this on a hot biscuit. Look how pretty these blueberries are. I don't, I'm not sure what kind of blueberries they are, but they are pretty. And I've got about eight cups. We're going to be crushing these blueberries just a little bit. Um, I still want to leave some whole blueberries. Because when I make preserves, preserves, I like to have some, some chunkiness in it, some little bit of fruit in there. So we're going to get these mashed up and get started. We got our blueberries mashed up, and it, I guess it probably don't really look like it, but I did. I took a potato masher and I mashed on them. Now, I don't want them pureed. That's one thing I don't want, because um, I like to have some whole berries in my preserves. And as I do cook, they'll, they'll even uh, mash down just a little bit more. But uh, you can only mash so much. <laughs> like I said, I don't want them pureed. But they're looking good. When I mashed on them, got quite a bit of juice out of them. So now we're going to get started on this blueberry preserves. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this front burner on. Keep an eye on this. And I've got my pot over here with uh, my jars in it. And I've got just my little jelly jars. I've got 12 of them. I don't know for sure how many I'm going to be using, but that's what I'm going to start with. I don't think I'll get 12, but we'll see. I'm going to get them hot. I've got my little funnel here. I got me a teaspoon of butter. I got me a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. The lemon come off my lemon tree, which I'm really proud of. Um, I only got a couple of lemons left on it, though. <laughs> I've been using them quite a bit. Now, this recipe, blueberries have, their, they've got a high pectin content, that's for sure. They're, they're high in, in a natural pectin, but uh, I'm still going to put a little bit of my own uh, dry fruit pectin in here. I, you know, so I just dearly hate to go through all this in my, my jam or my preserves not set up. So I always usually put a little bit of pectin in it. Now, if I wanted to stand here for a while... And really cook this down it would thicken up for me and that's really the old way that we used to do it and uh, but since time is not on my side anymore I'm gonna use a little bit of pectin in it but I'll tell you how much I use as we go on with the recipe and the other thing that I'm gonna do is a little bit different if you were with me on my last video 
um, I was planting tomato seeds. But at the end of the video, I sat down and we read out of the uh, Victorian kitchen garden book that I had. And I read a part in there with those talking about making jam and stuff. And um, something that even as long as I've been canning, making jam, I never seen my grandmother do it. Uh, I've never been around anybody that done this, but you may have. But in the book, it says that when making jam or preserves out of a dark fruit like blueberries, blackberries, etc., using brown sugar just gives it a really good taste. Well, I always use white sugar, but I'm going to be using brown sugar today. And we're going to see just how good it is. Now I've got my my eight cups of berries here that I've crushed up. And even the ones that aren't really crushed up, they're broke up. You know, the skin has broke. So when you add that sugar to it, it's going to help it break down just a little bit more too. But what I'm going to do is, I've got my berries in here. I'm going to go ahead and put my tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm going to go ahead and put my teaspoon of butter. And I've got six ounces of dry pectin. I'm going to stir this up good. I'm going to let this come to a boil. I want it to come to a good rolling bowl before I add my sugar. Now there's the juices are really going to start coming out of these blueberries. And that's how you'll be able to see what kind of bowl you got because they're going to break down the juices and everything and really come to a good bowl. So we're just going to let that do its thing right now. And here I've got my eight cups of brown sugar. So this will be the first time I put brown sugar in preserves or jam or anything like that. I've got my lids right here. I've got them in just some uh, hot tap water, not boiling. So that's all we, we've got to do. And I've got my little funnel. Put my butter up. I've got my rings here. Like I said, my, my jelly jars are in here. Four ounce jars. Um, I thought about doing it in pints, but I think that's just a little bit much for just me and Mr. Brown here. I like making jams or preserves because you can use both of them in so many different recipes. Cookie recipes, cake recipes. If you've ever made uh, some, or rolls with, uh, uh, with jam in the middle, um, just, of course, on your hot biscuit, on your pancakes. I can even use them making fried pies. I can put them in just like I would pie filling. Um, that's why I like them kind of thick. But uh, there's just so many different recipes. You can, uh, when you're making muffins, kind of stir you a little bit of jam in there. Just so many things. When you're making homemade uh, filled donuts, Put you some jam in there. It's delicious. So that's why I like making really preserves more than I do jam. But, but either one is a good thing to have in the pantry. Because you can eat it on a piece of toast, a bagel, a hot biscuit. You can mix it in with uh, your yogurt. You can uh, just so many things that it's good for. And this is starting to come up to a bowl. And uh, these blueberries, like I told y'all when I was showing y'all how pretty the blueberries were at the beginning, they come off my daughter-in-law and my, my youngest son's um, little farm they had. Um, and she had a little orchard out there. And the, the chicken pen was out there, and there was blueberries and fruit trees and um, a lot of stuff growing out there. And she just picked a bunch of blueberries, and she put them in the freezer. And she's not had time to do anything with them, so 
That's what I'm doing. And it's coming on up to a boil. I've also got some peaches that she gave me that she put up in the freezer that they were fresh peaches. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking they may be Campbell, Missouri peaches, not sure, from maybe last summer. And uh, I'm going to be making some uh, preserves out of them too. So that'll be a different video too. You know, having any kind of fruit in your pantry, it's it's a really good thing to put up because you never know when it could get to the point where you can't get fruit, where you can't afford fruit. Um, I do grow berries here on this hill, uh, different kinds. I got raspberries and blueberries and blackberries. I've got fig trees and uh, I've got a an apple tree, a drafted apple tree growing right now. Um, we have a hard time growing fruit trees on this hill. Uh, especially peach trees it just <laughs> they have died one after another no matter what we do we just can't get them to do good um, I'm hoping my apple tree so far it's doing good but it's not giving us any apples yet but it's looking okay but when you don't have access to fruit because you really don't have a good place to maybe grow fruit trees but if you've got even container berries growing Berries are so good for you, especially the dark ones like blueberries and blackberries. And I know there's all kinds of different kinds of, of berries out there, and I don't know all of them for sure. Um, but uh, I did buy me some, uh, and it's just because I come, I mean, I seen them when I walked in that farm store the other day, uh, red currants. I've always wanted some of those, and I've tried ordering them online and they're always out so when I seen them there was two left on the shelf so I grabbed the two plants and I'm gonna see if I can grow some red currants make currant jelly or whatever with it okay I'm gonna quit stirring this really let it come up to a good boil a good hard boil and then we'll add our brown sugar my jars are over here dancing in the water. They're hot. And uh, we'll be back and we will start putting our sugar in there. And I'll show you what it looks like when we get it in there. And when it comes up to another bowl with the sugar in it, I'm going to let it boil with sugar in it for about three minutes. I'm very impatient. <laughs> Always want stuff to hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay, it's come to a good rolling bowl. Which is not going to roll, but it's come to a good bowl. I'm going to put my eight cups of sugar in here. And I know that seems like a lot of sugar. But it takes a lot of sugar when you're making jam or preserves. And of course, we're going to be using brown sugar instead of white sugar so this one's a new one for me I'm going to stir some of the sugar put the rest of it in there Get the lumps and everything out of it. And it'll dissolve. The sugar will start dissolving and doing its thing. Now a lot of times when I'm making jams and preserves, I don't I have to admit I don't always go by the recipe. I just do my own recipe. Because I, I come to figure out that if I put more pectin than what the recipe calls for, it always sets up. Just seems like to me the recipe never, never holds up good to the amount of, of dry pectin that they usually put in it. But if I use a little more, or sometimes I've even doubled the pectin, it always comes out perfect. So... So our sugar has dissolved. 
I want to make sure it's stirred up good. It smells wonderful. The color is so pretty. Now, I'm going to let this come up to a full boil like I did before. And then I want it to boil for about three minutes. Usually, they say one minute after it comes up to a full boil. I'm going to do it for three. Okay, we're at a pretty good boil there. We're going to do this for three minutes. Then I'm going to shut it off. There's not much, hard, there's no foam on top. So I won't have to skim any foam off. And we'll get to ladling it in our heart jars. Okay, I got my hot jars here. And we're going to start filling them. We need to leave about a fourth of an inch headspace. Y'all, it made 11, uh, not 12, but 11 of my jelly jars. I had 12 out, it made 11. So we done pretty good. Man, look how pretty them jars are. Pretty dark color. And I have to tell y'all, y'all know Miss Lori, I did taste of it. And I have to confess that that brown sugar really puts this preserves over the top. Really, really good. Now I'm taking my towel here and I'm going over and around my jars get them cleaned up before we put our lids on I see I could have put a little bit more in this one but you know we can't get them all perfect but they're gonna do good they look so pretty and smell so good and I can tell you they taste good too because <laughs> I've already tasted of it Now we're just going to take our lids, and you see how, how easy this is. Don't ever be intimidated by putting up jellies or jams or preserves or fruit. It's such an easy process, and all you have to do is water bath it. So I know a lot of y'all talk to me about being still just a little bit uneasy about pressure canning and um, if you go back and watch go to my playlist and watch my canning videos I take you step by step and I t and I show you and tell you that uh, you don't have to worry about it that's hot that uh, nothing to be afraid of. 
And we're going to get our rings on here. Put them in our hot water bath. And once it comes up, now that water needs to be one to two inches over your jars. Once it comes up to a good rolling boil, I'm going to boil them. Let them boil for about 10 minutes. Then turn the water off. Take them out. And uh, we'll come back and, and look at them and talk about them. I've had some of y'all ask me in past videos if I reuse my cannon lids once I take them off a jar of something. And I'm just going to tell you, yes, I have. And I do. But it depends on, too, how many times I've reused them. I got blueberries on me. Um, and what shape they're in. I'll use them twice. And then if they're still in good shape, I'll put them up to use for when I'm just storing something and need a, a lid just to, in, a, in a ring just to store some kind of uh, uh, dry good or something in. But after about two uses, I usually don't use them more than that. Now my rings, I use them over and over and over. Now when they start maybe getting a little bit rusted up or something, um, I get rid of them. Well, sometimes I don't. I even keep the rusted ones for different uses. But uh, yes, I do reuse them. But I make sure that the seal is still good. Um, especially on... The jars that my jam jars, my preserved jars, my fruit, once I've had fruit in, uh, are, they're always in really good shape, the seal on them. So yes, I do reuse them. Just be careful and, and check your seal around it to make sure it's still going to be good and it's going to seal. But yeah, especially, you know, the past few years when it was so hard to get a hold of lids and stuff, yeah, I kept them and I reused them. Didn't have any problem. They all sealed. But I was just very careful with them. Looked them over good. So that's the answer to that. Anyways, I got the jars in the hot water bath. And they've not come to boil yet, but they're fixing to. So we about got this one whipped. And then we're going to be making, you know what? I've decided I'm going to make some peach butter. And I'm going to do it on top of the stove. Like, I've got a video making peach butter, but I've done it in a slow cooker. And I think I'm going to do it on top of the stove and get them put up. So, y'all stay for that one. It's a rocking and a rolling now. Ooh, jiggling and a going. Ten minutes, we'll be done. Well, I contemplated and contemplated on whether preserves or peach butter. I'm going to go ahead and do preserves. I don't have, I've got about five cups of peaches that were in my freezer and that's about what's in here so i'm going to make me some preserves going along with my blueberry preserves because i'll use these in a lot of different things and i do have some peach butter left on the shelf too so i've got well i don't i'm going to turn my stove on i'm going to go ahead and put a tablespoon of lemon juice a teaspoon of butter and I've got six ounces of fruit dry per fruit fruit pectin I'm telling y'all I can't talk anymore sometimes I wonder and I'm just gonna stir that up and I'm gonna let this come up to a bowl and once it comes up to a good roll of bowl I'll let it boil for about one minute Now we can also put a little cinnamon in here too. That's optional. That's up to you. I'm thinking I'm gonna leave cinnamon out this time. And if I wanna, if I'm doing a certain recipe or something, I can put a little cinnamon in it. But if you put just a little bit, and you're eating this on a biscuit, oh, so good. Probably about uh, with five cups of peaches. 
I think a teaspoon would be plenty of a good uh, ground cinnamon. So let's let that come up to a bowl. Our peaches have come to a, a good rolling boil that you can't stir down. So I'm going to let it boil for a minute. And then we're going to put our sugar in there. Okay, it's been boiling for a minute. And I skimmed off a little bit of the foam. There's a little bit left, but I don't worry about just a little bit. I'm going to put six cups. I'm using white sugar this time. And I've changed my mind. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of cinnamon in here. I'm going to stir this up. Let that sugar dissolve good. I just got to thinking um, how good that cinnamon would be in here for so many different things, especially if I use some of these preserves to make fried pies with. And that's what I do a lot. Now you can see that I left some of my fruit kind of hunky there. Now you can you can uh, puree yours if you don't want chunks this big or just use a, cut them up smaller or use a immersion blender and kind of blend it up a little bit. But I do like, in my preserves, I do like, especially with my peaches, I like little hunks in there. So I think my sugars dissolve good. Now what we want to do, just like with our blueberry preserves, I'm going to let this come up to a good rolling boil, and I'm going to let it boil for about three minutes. And if I see any foam come up, I'll probably just go ahead and get some of it off, but there's really not that much in here. A little bit of foam is not going to hurt. Okay, it's come up to a good rolling boil, so I'm going to do this for three minutes. And I might even try to skim off a little bit of this while it's still boiling. Okay, it's been three minutes. I'm going to turn this off. My jars have been over here in the pot, and they're hot. So we're going to get them out, and uh, we're going to get them ready to start filling up. I'm going to get some of this foam skimmed off too. It's gotten a little bit foamier even with the butter in it. That's okay. We're going to start filling our jelly jars up. Same with these that we've done with the blueberries. A fourth of an inch head space. Close as you can get it. Without getting too full. Now we're going to be able to open up a jar of our blueberry preserves because I done them last night. <laughs> I'm doing these this morning. I tell you what, I got tired and I had to go to bed. So these uh, these would have to sit up a little bit overnight for we to open some. But we'll open up the blueberry ones anyways. Now, if I was making peach butter, I would have parade the peaches up, and I would have even added a little bit of vanilla. So I'm going to get these in the jars and get them in the hot water bath. It's going to be so good on a hot biscuit or in a, got that one just about right. This one needs a little bit more. Or in my fried pies, on top of some vanilla, homemade vanilla ice cream, the sky's the limit. So guess what? 
11 evidently is my lucky number because that's what I got with these. Now, I've got probably hmm, about four tablespoons left in the bottom of my pan. I made a mess on this one. But uh, I'm going to save them because it won't fill a, even a little jar. I'm going to save it and let Mr. Brown have it. He can eat it on a biscuit or he can get him a little bit of ice cream and put some of that on there and it'd be really good. So yeah, 11 blueberry and 11 <laughs> peach preserves. We're on a roll. So that was uh, five cups, more or less, of uh, fresh frozen peaches that have been in the freezer that my daughter-in-law put up. Like I said, I'm pretty sure they come out of Campbell, Missouri. And if you're from Missouri or even around that part and have ate their peaches, you'll know how good they generally are. We have a, a place not too far from us called Newport, Arkansas. And uh, there's a big strawberry farm there. And they grow oh, loads and loads of strawberries there. Used to, we would go get several flats and put them up. Um, we haven't done that in a while. Okay. Got them cleaned up. Now we're just going to do as we usually do and put our lids on here. They've been in a little bit of warm water. Vinegar water. So let's get our lids on and then we'll get our rings on. Okay, we're in our hot water bath again. That comes up to a really full rolling boil. I'm going to time it for 10 minutes. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and I got them out of the hot water bath and they're sitting here until I start hearing them pop, pop, pop. And uh, we'll come back and we're going to taste our blueberry preserves. Now I've had questions asking where I got my my jar uh, lid lifter. Miss Vicky from Vicky's Country Home, she got this for me. She had one and I wanted one really bad and couldn't find one. And she found this. Now I, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure she got it off Etsy. Uh, I don't think it was eBay. I think it was Etsy. And this is a, I can't really read the patent on it, but it's pretty old. It was made in USA. It's called Vacuum Jar Cap Lifter. And this is the berries, I tell you. If you never had one of these, you don't know what you're missing. So maybe y'all will find one. But we're gonna open our jar up of our blueberry preserves, and I'm gonna show them to you. And you can see those blueberries on top. And you can see how good it's set up too. Now this has just been overnight. So they've not really been able to set up very long. But I can't wait and I want to taste them. Now you know how tart blueberries are anyways. So you're going to have a little bit of sweet and you're going to have a little bit of tart. Which I like both. So. And you know that I talked about liking a little bit of whole berries in my preserves. So I left a, quite a few whole. But you can crush yours up a lot bigger than the, or smaller than this. But isn't that pretty? Hey, I'm gonna taste my preserves. But y'all know I already tasted it. Those are so good. It's sweet, but it's got a little bit of tart at the end. I'll be able to use this on cheesecakes or anything like that. If y'all notice this new cabinet behind me. Sorry, Mr. Brown is working on a project. And when he gets it completely done, I'll show it to you. But you can see I've got my, my new uh, uh, meal in here, my, berry, my wheat berry, my blah, my meal back here <laughs> for milling my wheat berries and stuff. I haven't used it on video yet, but we're coming to that pretty soon. And we're also gonna be making some bread with it too. We're gonna mill it, grind it up. The one I've got is manual. This will be the first electric one I've ever had. 
So that's going to be exciting. And we're also going to make bread with it. So that's coming up sometime or another. But I wanted to get these preserves made because I really need to get it done. And I want to share it with you. So I hope y'all try it. If uh, you don't have access to, to fresh berries, don't worry about that at all. You can go to the frozen food section and uh, get y'all some blueberries, peaches, or whatever. And it'll they'll turn out good too. So, glad you joined me in the kitchen today. Mr. Brown's outside working really hard around his new shop. We're going to show y'all that pretty soon, too, because he is so excited about it. So, y'all have a wonderful weekend. We love y'all so much, and we're praying for everybody the world over. Love and peace. And uh, to anybody that's, that's struggling, we're praying for you. So, we'll see you in a few days. Bye-bye.